uh, at the same time, which explains all the gear. So don't be afraid to ask questions. I'll, I'll, I'll get you, uh, is, I'll answer them to the best of my ability, but uh, I'm gonna get meatballs going as soon as uh, our social media folks, Tom and Tracy in the back, tell me we're, we're live. All right, and we're up and running, and welcome for Diesel Club to our big rally today. We're talking our convection microwave. Thought I'd throw in our induction cooktop. We didn't cover that last year. A lot of our motor homes now have this in them, and I threw in as a bonus uh, a quick little instant pot recipe. I know there's a pressure cooking segment tomorrow, but I have a great recipe for uh, folks who, you know, if, for, especially for full timers or you have grandkids stay with you or gas or you just need some nice comfort food. Really good. It's not the healthiest thing. I know last year my muffins were delicious, but I got a little feedback. Let's, let's, let's make it a little healthier. So today we're going to be doing an Italian wedding soup. It's getting to be fall. So of course it's 85 degrees out today and I'm making soup. Welcome to Indiana in October. So I have the recipe for these. Um, back up here, I can get you all that. The first thing we need to do is get these uh, meatballs going here. And when you're using a convection microwave, you always use the rack because you need that air to circulate around. All right, I gotta set my timer for 25 minutes. I am using the convection. I am baking in here right now. So do you have the button? Yes. Here, let me kind of take you through this. On the front, on your panel, you have a thousand buttons, uh, apparently. You can reheat, defrost, soften or melt, convect, steam. Uh, you can adjust your cook power, AccuPop for popcorn, a potato, uh, vegetables, just your basic cook, kids menu, which is great. Um, and you can hold something, keep it warm over here, your, your timer and all your buttons if you're gonna use it like a regular microwave. Now, one of the things that people uh, will read online is in convection microwaves, go ahead and use metal bakeware. Read your owner's manual. Whirlpool says do not use metal bakeware. It says right in the manual. Yeah, um, and it's one of those things that uh, you, you, you can, and we have in the past, and we haven't had any issues. One of the problems you may run into is if you're using the metal bakeware and you set it on the bottom and you hit microwave, what they say about putting metal in the microwave, it's all true. You will, you will have some issues. So um, Whirlpool just recommends using, using glass, don't use a metal trays in there. Uh, I do like this microwave. I have one in my home. I, I, I like this so much I actually put this in my house um, because I needed a microwave. And I said, you know what, these are great. Uh, the amount of time that we have had this, with all these features on it, we use the microwave a lot like you would. And manual bake is what we find we use the most because it works just like your traditional oven. If you are cooking a recipe that calls for 325 or uh, you know, 350, whatever it is, you can go ahead and you can put that temperature in it. It will warm up to that temperature and use it just like your oven. You can also use, uh, there are recipes in there. You cook in a turkey, you can try that. We made a turkey, uh, Tom and I did on our mobile meal segment, and we tried that. We threw the turkey away and we put it on manual bake. It just worked a lot better for us. These are things that not everything that works for you is going to work for you. Each microwave works a little different, just like your ovens at home, so you kind of got to experiment with them. You have to play around with them and see what features work. Um, I'll tell you, the, uh, the potato button called potato, if you press potato, you put your potatoes in, say you put three baked potatoes in, probably 90% of the time, depending on the size of your potatoes, it's going, they're, they're all going to be done exactly the same way. They'll be perfect. If you're using little baby bakers, it may overcook them. Uh, the steamer function on here, these come with the steam bowl. It works the same way. How many servings, what do you have in there? And it will steam those, according to Whirlpool, to perfection each and every time. Okay, so it's, I, I haven't used that. I don't have a great relationship with vegetables. Yeah, Diane. Yes. When you do the baked, but the question is uh, for folks at home, when you're doing baked potatoes in here, do you use it on convection? You literally place it on the plate 
and you hit the potato button. You don't have to hit the convection. It, it, it does it all by itself. Do you wrap it's, them in foil? No, I don't. It says just put them straight on a plate or in a pan. Uh, you know, like a glass dish is what, what, is what I like to do. Um, so this has a lot of features. Again, I don't, I don't work for Whirlpool, so I don't have every single bell and whistle and all the answers to this, but I'll help you unless I can. Yes? When you started the meatballs, yes. what buttons did you press? Okay, when I started the meatballs, what buttons did I press? Um, for the Italian wedding soup we're making today, that's recipe number one, I went and I pressed the convect button, and then I used the arrows and went over to manual bake, because that's what I like to use when I'm baking on this, and I set my temperature to 425. The microwave will heat up. One of the disadvantages for those who have these, it does take a while for these to heat up. I was probably 20, 25 minutes for it to get up to 425. What I did when I, I it was, you heard it beeping when you, as you came in, that signals that it's done. There are also bars at the bottom that will go and it'll let you know when it's getting closer to the temperature. When it reaches the temperature, it beeps, you open your door, you shut the door, you hit your select time, and then you put in the time that you want. These are cooking for 25 minutes. Uh, one of the things with the convection is it sometimes has a tendency to cook a little faster because it is not just the microwaves cooking that, it is hot air circulating in four directions, so it is going to sometimes cook faster, so you do have to watch uh, you do have to watch, just like in your oven at home, and it you know depends on altitudes uh, as well. Yes. I think one question, like you hit the potato button, is that microwave? So you can't put foil. Whirlpool Whirlpool does not recommend you use foil or uh, aluminum and metal pans in their microwaves. So if you have even if you're using it for convection, Whirlpool does not recommend, uh, in the manual it says, do not use metal baking trays in this unit. Other manufacturers may have different guidelines, but for this one right here, which I'm following, it says do not use metal in the microwave. So I would not wrap those in foil, and we just set ours on a plate, and we've never had any issues with it. Yes? A couple things. Um, so, so the three buttons that he was pushing, that's basically because you do have to preheat if you're using your convection oven type. That preheat is very important. Yes. So a lot of times it'll tell you the recipe is put your pan in there that you're going to use your glasses of water, preheat it with the microwave, and then you put your food in it and press it in there. Right. And it does do better. And the other one is the buttons on the bottom, the potato, mm -hmm. the popcorn. Those are all microwaves. Just one touch. Right. But when you're convecting, you need to use either the rack that goes in in the back or the tray rack if you want it to sit down and rotate. Yes, sir? I was talking about buttons. We have an older model, mm -hmm. and it has a bake and roast. Okay. What's the difference? Um, this you can do roast as well. I have found zero difference in what I've done if I put it on bake or if I put it on roast. Uh, it's still circulating the air. As for the exact specifics and how they figure that out, I can't answer. How does, does anybody know the answer to how the roast? Mm -hmm. So we're also cooking with the induction cooktop today. Who has an electric induction cooktop? Okay, one thing that I do like about these is you don't have that heat in the open flame inside your motorhome. The big drawback to these, even though it's two burners, you can't boil two things at once on this. Um, so if you need things to, uh, a roaring boil here and a boil here, it doesn't work that way. They will adjust, so you can have this to six, and this will come down to four. Uh, you can also choose your temperature on here. So if you're cooking a recipe, it says, you know, saute this at 300 degrees. You can adjust that to 300 degrees. It also has on here, if you want to go one through 10, you know, one being the lowest, 10 being the highest. So you can cook both ways. For this wedding soup, I am sauteing some onions, and I'm going to be throwing some uh, garlic in there as well. So we'll let that get up. To, I have that at 450 degrees right now. Um, we find for boiling and sauteing, I like to use the temperature more than I do the 
one through 10. That to me works a little bit better. Uh, I'm sure 10 is 450 degrees. I've never done meter, heat meter testings. I'm sure that's how it works. But uh, that's one of the, uh, I mean, they pop out. They're made to be used like this. And again, you don't have that uh, open flame in there. Now, you do need to get special cookware for these. You need pans that will work on a convection microwave. You can tell if a, a magnet sticks to it uh, is, is how that works. So um, it's a convenient tool, and, and, and a lot of all of our diesel products now have this true induction cooktop in here. Um, the microwaves have been uh, upgraded to a different Whirlpool model for 2019s. Uh, it's now Wi-Fi enabled. So I guess you, you, you have one of those? You do? Yeah. And I, I, you know what? I haven't had the chance to get in and experiment with one of those yet. But from my understanding is you put the app on your phone, and you can monitor your cooking from there. If you're outside entertaining, you can watch the timer. You can make adjustments. So uh, I haven't dug into that. Maybe next year I can do that. Yes? Uh-huh. You can, really? And it will read that. Do you, have you played around with one? No, I just looked at it because this model is discontinued, and ours is gone. Looking at upgrading, yeah, it, it, it looks like it does the same things, but with the Wi-Fi, I find intriguing. So if, if you use that, let me know. I'd love to hear how it works. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just about anything you can use in an oven, you can use in here because of the, the, the temperature on there. It's just Whirlpool doesn't want you to use metal pans in here. So for like your cupcakes or your muffins, your pastries like that, you can put those in there and pop those out. And you would, you would be fine, absolutely. So um, for this, you just saute uh, your onions. I'm going to throw in uh, some garlic as well. This kind of goes together really fast. Um, the one thing that we do have with, that we do like about this, I have, that I find works great, um, those pampered chef, and I'm just throwing, uh, pizza trays, you know what I'm talking about? Those work fantastic in here. Uh, especially if you put it on the rack. Now, you can't use the big, the big round pizza one will not fit. But the stones, yes, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, the stones, we have a, a little one that, I don't know, it's about like that. The kids will use it, throw some chicken nuggets on there or whatever it is you're heating up. But toasted, toasted sandwiches, I'm, I'm big on making the toasted sandwiches at home. You throw them on there and it will toast and it will brown the bread and it will brown the cheese. Um, so really, when you think about this, you kind of have to think, not microwave. A couple of things, um, you know. Yes, you you don't you don't have to, but it's recommended too because you get that hot circulation coming up from the bottom, and that way it heats a little more evenly. Just like in your oven at home, you don't set it right on the bottom; you set it on the rack so the heat evenly uh, distributes through there. Yes, I'm sorry about that, online folks. Um, so how many people have used one of these instant pots before? You have, you have. Uh, they're really a, a, a great tool. I know there's a demo tomorrow, but we'll do something here real quick in just a couple minutes. I kind of want to get the, uh, the onions and, and garlic sauteing before I uh, keep going here. Um, what other questions do we have about our convection microwave? How many people are, are, are using older microwaves and thinking of upgrading to a convection? Or do we all, you all have convection microwaves? You all have convection microwaves. What types of things are you making in there? What types of things do you make in yours? Did they? Nice. Very nice. You know what? It, and again, we have used um, metal baking pans in here, and we haven't had any issues. It's just if you, if you go through and read your manual, and you want to follow manual, that's, that's what the manual states. Yes, what are you making in yours? No, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, you used... Okay. It has a tube. You can bake the tube cake. Okay. But I've used the microwave or the baking. But I can do a cake in about five minutes. In about five minutes. And have you used... She's using uh, bakes cakes in the microwave, but you use the convec for that? Uh, I have used both. Both? And they both turn the out fine? Bowl, I, I can use the microwave in five minutes. 
Okay. Oh, so you just put it, you put the mix in a Tupperware bowl? Yeah, with the tube in it. With the, it's called a stacker. A stacker, and then that works out for you. So that works. Who, who else likes to bake in there? Yeah, you have a question in the back, yeah. The, I haven't seen those yet. Do they, do they use those? I've seen the, uh, what are they made out of? Okay. Oh, the alum, like the aluminum pot pies? Okay. Okay. What other, yeah, what? You've made shortcakes? Nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so let's address let's address this because a lot of people and you bake in yours, and I think that's fantastic. And a lot of people are afraid to try things. Um, how much did you have to experiment with it before you got it down right? Okay. So it's like anything else; you just kind of got to experiment and play around because it's it it, it is going to vary. Uh, I was talking to a couple of folks today. Um, Someone's microwave, they have the convection microwave, someone's cooks really fast and someone takes a little bit longer to cook. So you, you do, you kind of have to check and, you know, check with your meat thermometer, what, uh, what, what are we making, what is it going to be? Um, some of the things we have made um, in ours, we did the turkey dinner, we did some toasted sandwiches. Uh, Tom, what else have we made in the, in the, in the convection microwaves? Oh, did you do a pumpkin pie? It worked out well? And, and it browns the crust on top. And see, that's the one thing that these do really well is when they aren't baked, they will do just like your oven and they will brown the tops of your pies. Uh, they will brown the tops of cheese. They will toast bread. Um, so don't think of it as a microwave when you're using it in the convect mode. Think of it as the traditional oven that you find in houses because it, it's, it's a little bit smaller of a footprint, but it works almost identically, almost identically. Yes? I uh, actually make cheesecakes. Oh, yeah. And mine as well. And if you're making a regular cake, if you use the um, spring foam pan mm -hmm. rather than a regular cake pan, okay. it, it cooks, I think, better, and if they're easier to get out. So she makes cheesecakes in spring form pans and has no issues. So again, it... it and how many times did you have to experiment with that? Did you get it right, right off the bat? I did it exactly what the recipe And called, just like that. That was fantastic. Who was I? Was somebody talking in here today about making a lemon meringue pie? That was you. Are you going to try it now? I'm try it. Okay, you're going to let me know how that goes? Okay, because I would love to, to hear how that goes. Um, who has cooked? No, it's, nobody has cooked with the induction cooktop yet. You, you do with the induction cooktop, you do as well? Oh, okay, and, and you do as well. Do you, do you like them, or do you wish you had the gas? Yeah, they do do a, well, a, a good job. I did notice recently that um, when you put it on the temperature, mm -hmm. I do before taking the Really? Because yeah. I have had on this, and maybe it, it heats differently, but I haven't been able to crank them both up on high at the same time. No, oh, you know what? That's great. I mean, and the numbers are the same. That's fantastic because we have we have tried that a couple of times. We've had that, yeah, yeah. All right. So then we put in our six cups of chicken broth and bring that to a boil, and we will let that boil while those are cooking. And I had the onion and the garlic. Yep. Just you can. Yeah. Just a little bit of uh, butter at the bottom, and I like to I like to saute. A lot of people will saute in one, and then in no. We're doing the same thing. It's less cleanup, right? It's, it's better that way. Uh, well, this hopefully comes to a boil uh, at some point. Um, do you find um, on yours, what boils faster when you do the temperature or you do the uh, up to 10? I think the 10. Do you really? Yes. Well, let's try that. Because we have um, heat. I'm doing this all from backwards. There we go. Let's try 10 and see what happens that way. All right, so this is going to be real quick, uh, a nice comfort food mac and cheese. Let me grab uh, the recipe here, and I'm going to try and do this backwards. So, um, yeah. 
All right, so who's, who's cooked with the Instant Pot again? I'm sorry, raise your hands. What do you, what are you make in there that you like? Everything. Everything. We have um, a meatloaf recipe that works really well, tacos. We do a, a, a General Cho's, General So's chicken, uh, which is fantastic. It does, a, it does a great job. I know a lot of people are replacing, uh, who, was, it, was it you? Yep, see? You and I had some great conversations this morning, didn't we? So, uh, all right, so you pour the pasta, the water, and all this in here. And this is really fairly quick. Um, a great comfort food, and I, I think for those who have signed up, you'll get a uh, better lesson uh, tomorrow. But I just wanted to show you this uh, real quick, and I, I was in the mood for some mac and cheese. Um, all right, you pour your pasta in there. You got uh, some salt. And a little bit of pepper. And then a little bit of butter. And this has got heavy cream in there, so you know it's going to be good. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Yeah, it is a good comfort food. But, you know, this is one of those things that, uh, you know, kids love. And who doesn't love comfort foods when when it's actually fall. All right, so everything's in there, just that easy. One of the things I find on, on mine, sometimes the seal pops off, this rubber seal, and then you don't get, it steams out the side and it, you gotta make sure that that's, that's in. All right, so the cheese goes in at the last. After it cooks the noodles, then you put the cheese and the cream in and let it heat up and, and, and get melty. So you put that on. And then you hit manual and four minutes. And you just adjust your timer. And away you go. No, nope, manual. Four. All right. So that will do its thing. Even though it says four minutes and it says it's an instant pot, it's not instant. All right, it takes a little while. It's got to heat up. The water's got to heat up. It creates the steam and, and works its uh, wizardry inside. So even though the timer says four minutes, you'll see it'll start to count down. It doesn't say anything now. We blew a fuse. Well? Yeah, where is the circuit breaker? We wondered if that was going to happen today. The lights are LED. If there was a GFCI somewhere, well, maybe we won't be doing all this at the same time. Um, and the microwave stopped. Tom will find the... We were hoping they were going to be on different, uh, different circuits. We wondered if that was going to happen. Um, no, the lights, we can run off of batteries, but those are such a low draw because they're LED. Um, you know what? That would be fantastic. Yeah, these are the, the recipes uh, uh, for this. No? Well, that, that kind of... You've got to love uh, live video, so we'll, we'll, we'll try and reset that and hope that it comes up. Hopefully that's on a different uh, breaker when they come back on. Yeah, as long as we can find something on a different circuit, hopefully it'll be all right. This says 13, that's on. So that one's on. All right, so press select. See, now everything is all right. All right, so we got to start again. So I'll give you a see if you hit convect, since we have to do the menus here. If you hit convect, you can scroll through these arrows. You have convection cook recipes you can go through, manual bake. Uh, there's the roast, um, say you select convection cook, you can choose recipes. Are you doing bakery foods? Are you doing a whole chicken? Are you doing a casserole? Are you doing a lasagna, a beef roast? And it has these built-in recipes that you can use. So you got to scroll through the menu and see, oh, is it a thick crust pizza? Is it a turkey breast? Um, 
Yeah, there's a lot of, lot of features in here. Again, I like to use the manual bake. I'm gonna hit uh, select, you, it, and it tells you, hey, make sure you're using that convect rack. And then I set my temperature, and then I hit start. And then it says open and close the door to start it. And then you press start, and it's preheating. And you can see, even from that short amount of time, it went from preheated down to half. Oh, wow. So it, it may take just a few minutes to bring it uh, back up to speed. I don't know if we, yep, this is back on too. So let's uh, get this back on. Nice, all right. All right, there's that. We'll hit manual. And we will hope that this doesn't happen again. All right. It looks like we're good, so hopefully that won't put us too far behind. Um, it's cooking now. Beautiful. All right. Things happen, all right? But uh, that's one of the things, I guess, too, you know, to think about when uh, you're cooking in your motorhome, don't have too many things plugged in at the same time. Don't have the washer going. Don't, have the washer going. don't, don't dry your hair, you know? Yeah, you got to uh, watch what you have... Uh, Watch what you have going, right? So hopefully these will uh, heat back up here. Um, the the soften melt button on these, we used that last year, uh, and that actually works really, really well. You can put in on the soften melt, uh, do you need to soften or melt butter or chocolate? I mean, it goes through a list of items, and it does a wonderful job. Um, if you just need to soften some butter, it won't melt it, it won't boil it. The same with chocolate. Uh, you open it up and then you mix it and put it back in. But the soften melt feature for uh, those who like to bake a lot, do you use the soften melt feature on yours? It does work really well, especially if you're, you're yeah, you know, you pull your butter or you come from the store, it softens it really. Well. Yeah. For dipping little chocolate tabs, yeah, it works really well. In fact, we did um, the same sort of thing. We had a former White House chef on cooking with us, um, and we used this, uh, and he used, um, not the dots, but he used a, a high-end uh, chocolate that we just put in here, and it melts it really, really nice. Um, you know, and a lot of times they'll put wax in there. Some people do that. I think that tastes horrible. I think it ruins the taste of the, the chocolate. Yeah, the almond bark works really well, uh, too. So hopefully this will start to uh, boil soon, uh, and we'll go through there. Um, I'm, I'm sorry? If they melt the wax in there, Yeah, oh, I'm saying sometimes people for the chocolate, yeah, they'll take a paraffin wax and they'll put it in there so the chocolate stays a little bit creamier. Um, and yeah, so for, for when I'm melting chocolate or doing stuff like that, I don't, it's a preference, personal preference. I don't like to uh, put the wax into the chocolate. What? What other questions or comments or concerns or tips do people have with this? Because right now, for those of you who cook and who bake, I mean, you've got a whole audience for people who, you know, you've, you've baked a lot more than I do. Um, you know, does anybody have any questions on, on, on bake? Yes? Well, I've got a question about the microwave. Yeah. Because my microwave is a convection in our motor home. Okay. But it still is five years old. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, like I said, and she asked it, you know, she's been using the microwave for five years. And again, it all depends on what you read. There are people who use metal in these all the time. We've used metal in here. I am simply following the Whirlpool instructions. That's Whirlpool says, hey, don't use metal in these. But if you've been using it and it's fine. Right. And, and, and that's what I'm saying. A lot of it, it depends on the manufacturer for this particular unit here. Yeah, even yours, yours is Whirlpool, and they may have changed that, but in, in reading uh, this manual online or just printing it out, and, or the one that comes in here, it says, you know, they don't recommend that you use it. Does it mean you can't? No. I mean, you put it on the, uh, on the tray. I mean, you've had success with it for five years. Uh, like I said, we've, we've done that as well. Just, just read your instructions, and it depends on, on what you want to cook with. I would imagine, though, uh, in the event where, say, you bought this, and you use metal and something happened, and it, it would probably void your warranty. So that's one of the things to keep in mind. There's, yes? I went to a cooking class once, and it was recommended to use glass for everything. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she said there was a cooking class she went to that said use glass for everything. And that's what I, that's what I use. I don't, uh, like, so we've done some things in here, but like this is in a glass pan. So I, I prefer to use the glass. The other thing to remember, and this has gotten me a couple of times, if you convect in here, and then you're going to do something in microwave form, remember it's all super hot inside. You forget and you will burn yourself, because I have done that. I just baked whatever it was, and I reach in, and it's hot, and you get burned. So make sure you're remembering that it's on there. Oh. Check the breaker is on. The breaker's still on? No, it just went out. We lost power again. Well, this is not going anyway according to plan. Yeah, I will check the power strip. Is it back on? Oh, power strip. Okay, let's try this again. Freightliner people are not going to be happy when uh, I run over, are they? I will try not. We will see. All right. Let's try this again and hope that this turns out. I am sorry about this, folks. I thought it would go. Nothing ever goes according to plan, does it? All right. Now we will see what happens. Yes. When you're using the convection oven, can you leave the plate and the little plastic ring thing in the bottom? Of yes, the absolutely. When you're using the convection oven, can you leave the glass tray and the plastic ring? Is the question. Yes, I leave it in. I leave it in all the time. I just don't ever take it out. You you can. It's not going to hurt it at all. It just okay. sits there and spins. Yeah, there's a button on there. You can turn that off, but I just put it in and it does its thing, and I haven't had any issues with it. You can turn the turntable off. There's a, there's a turntable off button. Okay. Um, but it doesn't hurt for it just to keep Yeah, right there. Turntable, you can turn that off. Like right now it's on. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I don't, I've never had any issues with leaving it on. I think we're going to, you're going to plug something different in, in the back. We'll try. It'll be a backup if I blow another breaker. So this is taking a lot longer than, uh, than expected. That's all right there. What's that? No, they're not going to be done. And I hope they, uh, I do hope that they, see? Yeah, it's still got uh, a couple bars to go. Um, they're, 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 they're getting there, though. They're getting there. Now, the recipe, on the recipe is the, uh, what's that? All right, Tom, let's run uh, this over here. And we'll start it again now. Now let's see this building foil our cooking plans. Yeah. Well, well you know what though? We, here's, here's, here's the thing. When we, do our, when we do our cooking demonstrations on YouTube, we have, uh, we have this plugged in, and we have this, and we have a refrigerator. And it's fine. Turn your back. So this is just, did it pop again? There we go. Did this go out? Okay. Thank you. See, I'm working all backwards. Is this actually running? You, you, you may not eat free lunch today. I'm, how much time do we have? All right, we got 25 minutes. I, yikes! Yikes! What's that? It's preheating to 425 degrees. Oh, you know what it says? It says press cook time to set your timer. So, right, and then you, you set your timer, and, it, and then we'll go, I, I don't know how long it went. And then you need to hit. You put in your time, and you hit start, and then it. Well, that's and then it will. Uh, that's 15 seconds. Open the door and reset it. Let's, yeah, let's see what we got. I mean, they look. 
decent on top. I, th there's some pink down there, though. I mean, they could probably go 10 minutes. It's still on convection bake. It says right there, convection bake. We can't that. No, yeah, that's why I'm up here. But yeah, it's on convection bake. Let's do 10 minutes. Oh, come on. No, I gotta hit the timer button. And it's on four hours. I'm sorry, what's that? There are. We have a whole uh, YouTube channel with, with cooking on there. Why is it only giving me 10 seconds? Yeah, it says minutes and seconds, but it's only giving me 10 seconds. All right, well, I'll watch this. All right, we'll we'll watch. Yeah, it's we'll just we'll just watch it there. Um, and hope that that's done and that comes to a boil. Hopefully the timer is on in this. Ah, we're boiling up here. Yay, something's actually working. Hooray, right? I know, people on watching this on Facebook and YouTube, uh, I can't imagine the troll comments coming in, so thanks. <laughs> Appreciate that. Remember when social media was a great way to connect with your friends? And now it's, let's see what kind of outrageous thing we can say. All right, then you can use what you do is you put a bunch of greens in here. I like to use just, I, you can use whatever greens you like. I enjoy uh, baby spinach in this. And you literally just dump the whole thing in. And you let it boil for a little bit and then it cooks down. Now the recipe that I have on there for the uh, meatballs makes a lot, makes like 40. Um, so, and the great thing is, is they freeze really, really well. Uh, and so if you want to take and you throw some in the soup or use it for spaghetti or a meatball sub or whatever it is, they freeze really well, you can get them back out and then you can just uh, reuse them. So hopefully those will be done. We can put that in here. I don't know how this is gonna do. It's on. Did it go out again? No, nope. it's on. All right, well, it should be counting down. All right, well, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see what happens. I set the timer, and it was on four, so let's, it's not heating up. When you lose power, it makes things really fun. Yeah, let's do it again. Let me just uh, try it again. It's not heating up. No, I'll just hit, uh, let's see, we're plugged in over here. So let me, let me do this, reset it. And hopefully if you're taking the uh, pressure cooking seminar, there's works the entire time. All right, there we go. Yeah, it's tomorrow at uh, the same time. So there we go. This is on. This is closed. We'll see what happens there. I think it's one tomorrow. I'm not sure where. I'm not sure where it's at. I'm not sure who's. I'm be honest. I'm not sure who's. Yeah, I'm not sure who's doing that one. Uh, to be honest. So. All right. So this is boiling, and you're gonna want to turn this down. So we'll turn that down. Now that's, that's about ready for the meatballs. If the meatballs were done, you just to toss those in with a little Parmesan cheese and, and that's it. It's really that, that simple. I mean, it's just a couple ingredients. I mean, and it depends on how labor intensive you want it to be. If you want to go through and you want to make the meatballs yourself, yeah, it's going to take a little bit of time or go buy a frozen bag and throw them in. Depends on how much time you want to spend doing it. Um, the, the recipes actually are really good. I mean, they're, they're, they're really good meatballs. It's, it's not mine. It's not my own recipe. Uh, all right, so that's there. We're just waiting for that to go. We're waiting for the meatballs to be done, and then hopefully we'll be able to uh, get something to eat, or at least sample. Um, it's like about six minutes. I'll take, a, take them out in a few minutes, and we'll kind of see where we are. 
what other uh, questions do you folks have um, about the microwave that uh, I mean that you've been experiencing with? Yes. Yes. Correct. Yeah. When you put the potatoes in, do you use the rack? No, I never do. I just literally put them in a in a depending on how many have like the glass. Correct. Yeah. You. I mean, still use microwave safe plates and in trays and stuff. Um, but if you're convecting, yeah, use the rack. But if you're just microwaving, you don't you don't need to use the rack unless you're microwaving a couple things at the same time. If you got, you know, somebody wants this heated up and somebody wants this heated up, there are there are microwaves that say you can use the rack. Read the manual in here. I may or may not have done that and have had no issues. Okay, I haven't had any issues because of the way that it comes across. Um, so yes. Well, you got the Accupot potato vegetable, cook, kids menu, warm and hold. Um, I haven't looked in, into that. I mean, that looks like the way that that's lined up. That uh, Accupop is microwave, the potatoes microwave, cook, kids menu. I think those are all microwave, and the top is the convect button. Just as long as, if you're going to convect, you got to hit the convect button. And that puts it in the convecting mode. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's starting to get a little bit warm. So, are you sharing? Share, are you sharing uh, cooking recipes? What are you What are you passing on? Corn on the cob. Corn on the. Have you done corn on the cob in here? How do you do that? Corn on the cob. How does that work? Corn on the cob. Fresh corn on the cob. Okay. Is it good? Okay. Husk off nothing. Okay. 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 So one, on on the microwave one, setting. On the microwave okay. Setting. Uh, if I'm doing one, then it's three to four minutes. Okay. okay. Let it cook. It will be hot when it's done. Right. So use a hot pad or a pot uh, holder. Mm -hmm. When you take it out, set it on um, something where you can cut the end off, not the silk. Right. The base end. Cut about a half an inch off. Then holding your hot pad. Mm -hmm. Really? Now you don't put it. You just put it on a on a plate or a dish, or you just throw it in there. Just just put it in, just put it in there. Yeah, you don't need to put it on and you do the same thing. Is did you learn the recipe? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, and it it's the best tasting corn you've ever had. Really? Yeah, because I've never done it in the microwave. And it's six minutes for two years. And you squeeze it, and it does. It just kind of shoots right out, really. I have never tried that. That's a great idea. Can you put parchment paper in there? Yes, you most certainly can. When it's in convect mode, the question was, can you use parchment paper? Yes, because of the, the, the heat rating of the parchment paper, you could use this just like an oven. You can most certainly use parchment paper in here. Mm -hmm. Yep. I would, use, I would stick to parchment. I think uh, you'd have to look at your temperature rating at what wax paper burns, but I'd probably stick with parchment because of the heat rating on it. Yes. Yeah, like a Stouffer's lasagna? Aluminum foil. You know what? If there are people again, and that's one of the things we've been talking about is in these when you're convecting, do you use metal or a foil or not? Read your manuals. We, read your manuals. This does not. The whirlpool on this particular metal clearly states do not use any sort of metal cooking trays or foil in there. Um, and again, we just got you know most chefs say re recommend using the glass because of the the way it conducts, so. Uh, I'm sure it is. I bet that would completely, I would, I would, foils and microwaves just have never seemed to have gotten along. Um, so let's see where we are on this. And those look nice and brown and nice and hot. I would say we have some meatballs. So that doesn't get greasy then, huh? 
Well, it would, uh, wow, those are, those are really hot. <laughs> Even with an oven mitt, those are really, really hot. Um, no, this doesn't get, this, these, what, that's the, the thing with the turkey or really lean ground beef. You're not going to get all of that fat in there. Um, so this is boiling. So I guess I will uh, transfer the, uh, the meatballs into here without burning myself. That is the real trick. I mean, there's going to be a little, a little grease in here. And then I like to put a little Parmesan on. Let's get them right over, right over the target. Right over the target area. And then you can let, and then the, there you go. Look at that. Just like that. It is, it's really a simple recipe. And then you can just, I would turn that back up. You can heat that back up. And a little, a little, oh, you know what? The other thing is after that cooks, can't forget this because this is actually really, really good. You take uh, a couple of eggs, almost like an egg drop type of soup, and they are beaten. And then as you stir this around, oh, look at that. Timing. And you stir that. That's just mixed up eggs. Yep. And then you uh, let that cook, and while that cooks, let's see what's happening in our instant pot because I have no clue. No. And that okay. Now there are two different ways to do this. What I just did is called a manual release. Okay, so what happens is you are releasing all of the steam that's in there. The other way, if you put it on um, in the middle, leave it there, this automatically cooks over to warm and simmer down here, and you just kind of let it sit. We'll keep everything warm, and in the steam, will naturally, it will come out at a slower, natural rate. But this is just kind of down and dirty fast. Um, and it, you got to watch out because it's hot steam. You know, so make sure that you're, you're not right. And those steam burns are horrendous. They hurt really, really bad. Um, if you haven't had one, don't get one. I don't advise it. I recommend against the steam burn. So you let this go. And the nice thing is, is about this, it locks the lid in place until it's ready to be open. So you're thinking, oh, it's ready. To, it won't let you open it as some of the steam's coming out. It's like, hey, it's a little dangerous. I wouldn't do that. Um, and this out of the way, but this should be good. No, is this still not? There we go. See, it's not going to let me. You still, it's still saying, hey, you, you, there's a little like valve in there that needs to pop up. Um, you let me in. There we go. All right. Now, there's that seal. You got to strain this. And of course, I didn't bring a strainer. As we got here, I was like, I didn't bring a strainer. So you get to do this the super safe, safe way, which is why I have two of these. I'm going to strain it with a lid, and it's probably going to be uh, an epic fail. But have a colander. Don't leave it back at your uh, studio in Wakarusa. Just get the extra water out. And a couple noodles will pop out. That's all right. There you go. Look at that. Now comes the good part. All right. You throw in some heavy cream. Yeah, because uh, what recipe isn't better with heavy cream? And see how that's still on the warm. A little heavy cream in there. You can use, calls for 16 ounces of whatever cheese you like. This is a three cheddar blend. I've made it with uh, an Italian cheeses. It depends on whatever type of cheese you want. You go ahead and you uh, just pour it in there. Just like that, that'll heat up. Garbage, garbage, find another spoon. Here it is. It, it should go to the, um, over here to the uh, keep warm mode. Now it's on the keep warm mode. Normally it transfers over to that, but it hasn't been actually working the way we wanted it to today, has it? So that's all in. Uh, normally it will flip over to that mode for you. And it'll be on the warm mode and you literally just mix it up and let the cheese melt, and that's good. So once that melts, I think we're, we're, we're golden. And heats up, and 
we have all of our, our comfort foods for a nice, warm fall day. What other things, you guys? Who's coming to the social hour this afternoon? Fantastic. <laughs> That's great. So we'll, we'll probably be in there. There we go. This is nice and cheesy and warm. So you can see just how nice and gooey. And you can put it, you know, it depends on how much cheese you like. I like... Uh, the rest of, this one I actually stuck to it. If I were making this at home, where it says 16 ounces of your favorite cheese, I would probably put it in three bags. That's just how I operate. It's, uh, I do like cheese. They, 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 they make fun of my lunches at work. They say, what do you got today, cheese and meat? Yes. <laughs> that is typically the answer. So there we go. That is ready to go. Our soup is ready to go. And... We're right on time, even with the power failure. So how nice is that? So what, thank you, what other questions can, do, you, do you have real quick we can answer? Because I know people want to try stuff and I have bowls and forks and spoons and I'll let you, the, the soup is hot, don't burn your, who, who, so, who was saying they had soup on a golf cart today? Somebody, well, how did that work out? How'd that work out for you? She had a bicycle, I was on a bicycle. Soup on a bike. Yeah, well, that's fun. Nice. You got it all here? I think that's great. This is, good. This is going to be really hot. This is going to be hot. Um, remember, there's, uh, uh, there's this many of you in here. Um, so I, I say come up and, and, and help yourself. Um, yeah, just a taste. I got bowls, napkins, spoons, forks, and you can see how it is. You shouldn't be. What's that? All right. Hey, we're signing off. Thanks for watching. We'll see you when we revamp Mobile Meals in uh, January. Can everybody give me a Thor Diesel Club and chant in three? One, two, three. Thor Diesel Club. We'll see you next time.